even I feel full of faith watching that. <laughs> I'm like, oh wow, that's so full of faith. Praise the Lord. Can we have the live feed, feed on, please? Praise, praise God. You know, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I feel, yeah, I feel full of faith doing that. I'm going to come to that. Praise the Lord. Um, just quick announcement. So this week we're going to have our end of the year fasting, which is um, Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We will be praying. And if you can join us here, we want to pray and invite all your friends to join us. You know, um, it's been a great period of Thanksgiving. All of you online, it will be mighty. So one says, why do you do this? For some of us have been really praying already. We've been spending so much time in praying. Praying and really waiting on the Lord. You know, especially when wine press is concerned. I challenged the pastors and I said, during this wine press, I want us to invest. I want us to literally invest almost 10,000 hours of prayer. You know, and we've been working on it. We've been working on I told the pastors who were working on it. You know, there are several prayer chains going on. People have picked fasting and praying days. You know, that kind of thing. So, we're just praying. And what prayer does is that prayer fills your heart with assurance. And it gives you direction. You know, yeah, I was telling them during wine press. I knew a lot of people were... <laughs> I don't want to talk too much about this. I said one of the mornings I was praying just this week, I saw a vision of the next president. And they were like, like, oh, wow, who is it? I said, I'm not going to announce that kind of thing. You know, I could tell people close to me, but never going to announce that kind of thing. You would eventually see the person. Because I don't even think that's very important. Because either you know the president, what will you not say? He's a powerful prophet. Is that not all? Yeah. I think one should be bothered about it. Like if you trade crypto, what coin is going to go up? Praise the Lord. If you do stocks, what stock is going to go up? What land is going to multiply? And that's what's going to be you know, powerful. I already have the scripture for the year. You, I already have the scripture. I spent a lot. Yeah. yeah you, I, I can give it to you. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 1 to 3. You can begin to read it. Just begin to render it. I'm not going to read it right now. Uh, we're going to do it. You know, just renumerating a lot of these things. Amen. So, it's a, it's a great year. That's all I can tell you. You know, through the Spirit, the Holy Ghost will make your journey into the year. Then you come back into time and see what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. So, I want to encourage you that I know that a lot of you are celebrating and jumping up. I love them, but this is the time to really celebrate and, you know, and just, you know, be, be grateful. Praise the Lord. Well, it's Christmas morning. You know, so that's that. Then um, 31st, which is this Saturday, we have, um, what they call it, we have, um, we have end of the year service. It's starting at 9 p.m. Just to let you know, because we're expecting about 7,000 people, we've made provision for everyone, including parking. There, there are several car parks, so you need to watch out for the sign. There's car park A, B, C, D, E, F, several car parks. We're going to use, the, we're going to use two auditoriums, this auditorium. We're going to use what they call it. We're going to use Coliseum as the overflow. You know, Coliseum will sit on that 2,000 people. We're going to have people to sit in the car park. And we're going to have several thousands and things of thousands join us online. You know what I love about that service? It's a service that when you invite someone to join, they, they would join. You know, so please invite all your friends to join the watch night service. Invite all your friends to join the watch night service. Glory to God. Either they join online or they join um you know, on site. So it's Christmas and um, fast and prayer start this evening at 4 p.m. We're going to stream the mainland church carol. It's going to be a great time of streaming. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, it's Christmas. So we want you to look at someone close to you and wish them a very Merry Christmas before we start. Look for three persons and wish them a very, very Merry. Praise God. And, and because it's Christmas, can I get some help? We have some goodies for everyone here. Yeah. We have some goodies. We have some perfumes. We have, uh, we have some perfume. This one is Dolce, and Dolce Gabbana. The one. Yeah. And it's for men. You know. Yeah. And whose birthday is it today? Who is a man and it's your birthday today? Brother Thomas, come. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And Merry Christmas. Happy birthday to you. And Merry Christmas. You see how you really volunteered yourself. You couldn't stop it. <laughs> Happy birthday and Merry Christmas. So please, please, yes, make your wife jealous. You know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, let's see. Who is the lady that invited someone to church today? This is for you. You're a lady? Who did you invite to church? You invited her. Just come get it. Hey, take it. Oh, that's it. Just last. There's more. There's more. 
Merry Christmas. We'll, we'll, we'll like butter cookies. Butter cookies. Butter cookies. Butter cookies. We want butter cookies. You want butter cookies? Who wants butter cookies? Who wants butter cookies? Who wants... Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> butter cookies. Butter... <laughs> It, the things of the spirit, you just say, I want you, take it. It's it, it, it wine press spirit already, you lambano it, you know. This is a perfume called King's. It's called the Saint of what perpetual prosperity. Wow. Woo. This King's. Which man, which man deserves this perfume? This is a man's perfume. This is a man's perfume. Okay. Okay, brother, then you have it. Wow. 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 So many nice things here. So many nice things here. What is this? This poke has something. Okay. Yeah. So this is a lot of nice gifts here. So we also have them. Um, ju just by the way, if you're a leader in church, please don't come and get anything. The, the, the reason why, hold on. The reason why is that opposite the door. Did you see all these hampers on the opposite door? All those hampers are for all of our leaders. All of our cell leaders. All those hampers are for you. Yeah. So all those hampers are for you. Don't come and disturb those that don't have hampers. You know. Yeah. So this is chocolate. 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 A any family with kids? With kids? With kids? With kids? Talking about what you coming to get with kids? If, if you have kids? Do you have kids? Or, or you're the kid yourself? <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you this one. And she's coming. I'm going to give you this one. I'm, I'm going to give you. Exactly. Ble ble bless you, ma. Bless you, ma. Praise God. I is it Christmas right now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Santa came to church today. It just... Uh, wow. <laughs> He's a... I don't even know what this is. I'm trying to find Qu choir. Oh, we blessed the choir in the first service. Those that came for the first service. Oh, sorry, sorry, you didn't. You know, ask Ben and Max Sam. They took for they took for the choir. They took for the choir. Don't mind them. You know. Wow. Help me bring out all of these things. Let me bring out some of these things. All this. There's a duvet, right? Yeah. With a single lady that covers her knees to cover herself at night. A single lady. Oh my goodness. Can you help me open and check what they are? Oh, wow. The tidings to you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And hi. Happy New Year. Okay. okay. Can you help me open this one also? Yep, yeah, this is chocolate. I think this is also chocolate. Oh, they brought the baby right now. Okay, okay, this is for you. Uh, oh, wow, she wants to take it. What, what is this? We just keep all of this here. You know, we just have so many things. You know, yeah, yeah. What's this one? I think we just, you know, we have the next service, so we have loads. Okay, I see. Have this one here. This one is um for this has to be for a couple because it's midnight orchid scented candle. People that have midnight experiences. Where is your husband? So, my brother, what's your name? What? Ikechuku, tonight is midnight encounter. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You must always remember that um, um, the, beauty, the beauty of life is the fact that we can give back. And in this season, look for people that are close to you and bless them.
this morning I woke up and I, you know, I just, I didn't wake up, but I'd come back to the room to prepare. And I saw on the side of my bread, I saw two boxes of gifts. And I think most likely I didn't touch it because I was already coming to church. One is for my wife and one from the kids, you know. And the reason I'm saying so is this. I want to say the big lesson. The big lesson is that you need to just be in the atmosphere where you can share. If you have parents here, today's a good place to say thank you and send them a gift. If you're married here, today's a good day to send something to your parents-in-law. If you have a husband, today's a good day to send to your husband. If you have a wife, today's a good day to send them a wife a gift. If you have, and a gift can range from a hamper, it can reach to a lot, bank a lot. You have clients, you have clients, you have, like yesterday, you may not know this, we fed 2,000 people, we gave out 2,000 families Christmas food hampers. We didn't feed them 2,000 families. They can, it can feed about 10,000 people for like three days. We gave it to 2,000 families and we gave them cash. Some of them 10,000 naira, some of them 20,000 naira. Because as they got the rice and all of this, these are the things you can also get. And this is what the spirit of Christ is about. It's a spirit of love. You know, we can't just keep worshiping in church and people are suffering around, around us. You know, just like last Sunday also, all of our members within our church that doesn't, didn't have, we also were a blessing to them. You know, so, so please, please, you know, discuss with your partner, discuss and be a blessing to your parents. If you have some customers or clients or contractors or bosses that have been kind to you this way, even the ones that have been mean to you, send them something. Say, oh God, I'm just sending you something. This is just a box of chocolate. You know, do, do donuts. A lot of people, send them a cake, send them donuts, send them a hamper, send them an alert. If your pastors, you know, Pastor DG, um, Pastor DG is there, you know. All of the pastors, Pastor Nee, Pastor Luke, you know, all of those pastors have been a blessing to you. Say, oh, please, what's your account number? Can I send you a gift? Send them a gift. Be a blessing. Amen. That is what the Spirit of Christ is. It's not in how big it is. It is what in the heart that is a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Okay. Let's, let's get into it today. So it, it was really nice. All of you that did not get something, don't worry. We'll find the time to also be a blessing again next time. You know, I, I know you're wondering, oh, <laughs> some of you wanted to come out, but your pride did not let you come out. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I saw it on your face. <laughs> it, it was there that, oh my God, if I was not that proud right now, I will come out and get it. Yeah, I saw John do that. Skills, I saw you do that. Skills, come here. I saw you do that. You're like, <laughs> if I was not skills, I would just come and grab it. You know, come, come, skills. Yeah, come. Sorry, his name is also John. So sometimes, you know, you know him as Gales. His name is also John, you know. You know, it's, it's been a tough year for him this year because he lost his mom, you know. And his mom is literally the closest person to him. But we thank God for his grace that has filled his heart in this season. I, I, how are you doing? Are you, are you doing so well? Yeah. And, and in the midst of, he was not even in the country when he died. He was busy performing shows and all of those things. And, um, you know, yeah, we're praying for you. And the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. You must remember that's what the church does. It's a place where we care about one another. As a pastor, as a leader in church, people must never turn to numbers. They must remain human beings to you. They must never turn to 3,000, 25,000. They must remain human beings to you. Glory to God. All right. Let's get into the teaching today. And I'm going to also, in my teaching, deviate and talk about wine press. Glory to God. Um, let me just say this quickly. Um, you saw the announcement. So we have two major events happening you know, just in the next one month. The first is the end of the year service we will have announced. But also from the 25th of January, we'll have this five days conference, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is called Wine Press. Every year, every year for it's over 15 years right now, you know, every year we will gather at the beginning of the year, you know, we'll gather. And what does it look like? Let me explain what it looks like because some of you have never been there. It's, it's, each day will be about four to five, four hours meeting. And someone says, why do we have to come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? And the reason is this, because we're giving God time to walk within and without. It's, it's the work of the spirit. What, let me tell you what happens in wine press. In wine press, wine press is the service you come. That after the service, 30, 40 minutes after people can't go anywhere again. Because they are under the chair on the floor. Some of them are crying. Some of them are laughing. Some of them are just under the power. 
It's that powerful. It's you heard a testimony of someone sharing from Wine Press about how you know what they call it shall not mature for over a year and the message that flowed. It's a place, it's wine press has come to us as a church. It's a place we've built as a place of turnaround. And why do we do that at the beginning of the year? The reason why is that we have many dreams and many thoughts in our mind, and we want God to speak to it and fill our heart with assurance. Something happens in wine press. It's a place of encounter. Wine press is a place I can go back to different wine press and tell you what the Lord said. Different wine press, what the Lord said. And different and in those meetings, people there are visions of the spirit. If you feel afraid about the future, wine press is for you. If you need a turnaround, wine press is for you. If you need a special renewal, it's for you. And what we'll do is that we'll start fasting the first full week of January. Then the last five days, we'll gather together and pray. All our leaders, all of our cell leaders will have been gathered since Monday. But we'll not open it up to other people till Wednesday. So by the time other people are joining, we are already so soaked in. We're already so soaked in. We're already so... And this wine press promises to be the most anointed, the most transformational, and the largest wine press. As a matter of fact, what we've never done before, from now, we're investing 10,000 hours of prayers every 8 p.m. we're already praying every it's one of the prayer sessions there are many prayer sessions going on there's morning prayer session midnight prayer session night videos going on but every 8 p.m. on YouTube we're already praying towards wine press because we believe that this wine press is my wine press say this wine press is my wine press and, and the reason I'm saying so is that you know the thing the people that become familiar with the mighty works of God are those that attend the church look at it oh it's my pastor I'll see him on Sunday and they don't understand that sometimes there are meetings that changes everything. Every of God's intervention is in men. Every of God's intervention comes through men. No miracle happened in the Bible without a man involved. So, your answered prayers is through carriers of the men of such intervention. And I believe that you are due for an encounter. We have hundreds of people come from the uk the us you that you are here there's no reason under heaven i should miss it so put it on your calendar put it on your people are buying tickets to come i spoke to a family yesterday from the uk they said pastor me and my wife are coming they said we bought our tickets the tickets are expensive we're spending maybe about six thousand pounds to buy tickets you know and that i said i said wow wonderful he said we're just trying to plan for our children to make sure that they are okay I spoke to another one. They are looking for how they can get help to fix their children. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me read something to you quickly from the Bible. Just about wine press. And you can, you can. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10. Quickly. Yeah. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10. So. What I'm inviting you is not for a meeting. And the Sunday service which is great. I'm inviting you for a deep encounter. Exodus chapter 19 verse 10. I'm inviting you for a deep, this wine press is encounters. And the Lord said unto Moses, he says, sanctify them today and tomorrow and let everyone wash their clothes. Why? He says this, verse, the next day, he says, be ready against the third day for the third day the Lord will come down. But the Lord has always been there. But this one is different. He said, the Lord will come down. I'm saying it to you because you need to begin to talk to your boss. I'm going to leave the office early. I'm going to take some leave because there are some things. What will happen to you? Well, there are some things that will happen. What will happen to you? The first thing that will happen is that God will fill your heart with assurance. Then when you leave wine press, one of the things that happen, there's this boldness. It's as if they're like, where are they? If you have attended wine press, but you know what I'm talking about. There's this boldness. The second that happens is there's this conviction that it's a good year for me. Then the third thing, the kind of breakthroughs of the spirit that we begin to see, it's phenomenal. So plan, plan to attend. So join us to pray. Begin to pray. Have your expectation out. Begin to pray. And all your goals for next year is a good place to pray about it. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's pray together right now. Father, we thank you for wine press. Well, thank you because you prepared a table before us. And we're trusting you that everyone that attends, it will be a time of direction, assurance, renewal, mighty breakthroughs by the Spirit of God. 
We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. John chapter 1. Someone say hallelujah. Look at him and say, don't even think about missing wine press. Don't even think about coming alone. Wine press will be so powerful. All of our leaders, cell leaders, I'm saying to you, cell leaders, we are standing on Monday. So Monday is morning session. You need to make sure you come. Hallelujah. And you're going to get your decision tags. John chapter 1 in verse 18, in the spirit of Christmas, Jesus said something that is very confusing. Jesus said in John chapter 1 verse 18, he said, no man had seen God at any time. And why is that very confusing? It's very confusing because I thought Moses said he saw the back of God. I thought some people said the fourth man in the fire was God and they saw him. But Jesus now gives us, and listen to me, Jesus is perfect theology. What does that mean? What Jesus says is the right thing and what the prophet says have to collaborate with what he said. So Jesus Christ says this, he says, no man had seen God at any time. <laughs> like it was so emphatic. He said, everybody before me that said they saw God, they did not see God. What they thought they saw was God. But in reality, they did not see God. Because question, they don't even know him. So how do you see him and know you have seen him? So when they saw God in their own imagination, they thought it was God they saw. But because they don't know him, they took what they saw as God. And they recorded the scriptures for us. The Bible says, no man had seen God at any time, which except the only begotten son referring to himself, which is in the bosom of the father. My question is this, everybody shout Merry Christmas and we will have all this huge celebration about Christmas. But the question is, why do we celebrate Christmas? Just a moment ago, we saw, we saw us giving out gifts. We saw us giving out gifts during Christmas. Can I get one of those gifts here? One of those gifts here? During Christmas, you, you, will, you, will give, you will give your partner, you give, you give someone. But the question, why do we give during Christmas? Why don't we give during Easter? And the biggest thing about Christmas is this. And the reason why we give at Christmas is this. Because Christmas, God laid the example of giving to us by giving his own son. During Christmas, we gave because God first gave. And he gave us the greatest gift of all time. Listen to me. Someone can give you a car. Someone can give you a house. When someone gives you himself, he has given you everything. That's what Christmas is. So the reason, so all of you are exchanging gifts today, but you must back up and say, why am I exchanging gifts? Because somebody gave me the biggest gift. But the question is that when it comes to gifts, why are gifts important? Because I've noticed this. When my wife wants to buy me a gift, she looks for something I need and she gives me a relevant gift. Sometimes when, God, when people give gifts, they're trying to meet a need you have in your life. When God looked at us, saw how empty we are, the perfect gift that met the need in our life was Jesus Christ. That's the message of Christmas. Some of you think all I need is love. Some of you think all I need is alcohol. Some of you think all I need is this. You say, this is why I'm depressed. And God is saying that that's not what you need. From the God's perspective, this gift is the biggest gift. This is the greatest gift. The gift of Christ. And the second thing gift does is this. You know, when you see a child and you want to give him a gift, you give him $20. But if you see Pastor Tony right here, you don't give her $20 because she's huge. You think of, oh, how can I give her 100,000, 200,000, 1 million, 2.5 million? Why do you want to give it? Because of her size. The size of the gift tells them the reflection of the value they have on you. When God gave you Christ, it, told, it tells us how big God thinks we are in his sight. The size of the gift is a reflection of the value. 
when, when Saul is not very valuable to you, you give him a card. Happy birthday. Yes or no? But when Saul is very valuable, you go out of their way to make their birthdays very special. You know why? Because they're very valuable. God, when God wanted to give you a gift, he didn't give you, he didn't send an angel. He didn't give you something. He gave you himself. And the reason I'm saying so is this. Sometimes when you go through life, Life can make it seem as if you're not valuable. Sometimes it's something your boss says to you all the time. Sometimes it's the experience you've had because of your failures that you've experienced. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's what is going on in your marriage between the husband and the wife that makes you feel like you're not valuable. But God, God looks at you, looks at you and I, and he thinks that you're so valuable, I'm not giving you a card. He gives you himself. The third reason why God gave gifts. When I'm going to give a gift to someone, and when I'm not lazy about it, when I'm lazy about it, I give out cash. When I'm not lazy about it, you know what I give, look, love to give? I always think of a gift I will give you that you will continually remember me when you see it. You know why God gives us a gift? <laughs> he gives us a gift so that when he's not there in a way you can feel him, when you see the gift, you can tell that his abiding presence is there with you. There are times in life you are going to go to dark decisions. There are times in life that in business you will lose some money. There are times in life, all those things that happen and you will feel as if, where is God? And God's gift is to remind you, I am with you. I will never forsake you. And sometimes in my life I would be in my office. For example, I have this egyptian friend and he gave me just this very tiny gift just about this size and it's on my table in my office <laughs> and every time i look at him look at the gift i remember him and i was sending him a text doesn't believe in the country i say hey how are you how is work today and he said oh wow you always remember me he doesn't realize that there's the gift he gave me is on his table and always reminds me that someone i have a relationship with someone you know what I'm saying? So, when God gives you a gift, that's what is hoping to happen. That even though you cannot see God, if you can perceive the gift of Christ, you can always remember that he that watches over Israel neither sleeps nor slumber. Let me tell you something. God knows we're human beings. And he knows our feeling for love. So, he gives us to let us know he loves us. This is what the Bible says it. For God so loved the world that he gave. You can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. So, when God gave us Jesus Christ, because some of you feel as if God doesn't love me. And you feel as if that because you have this challenge or that challenge. And God says, I don't love you, but I gave you myself. I don't love you, and I gave you all of these things. That's the reason why God did this for us. Today, what I want to leave the service with is that assurance in your heart that he loves me. I can see his gifts. He loves me. I, I can see his gifts. He loves me. Look at his gifts. I can see his gift. And, and the gift is not any quick, quick gifts. I'm, I'm, if you get hampers often, hope you know they are hampers and they are hampers. Huh? Someone in the choir said something. They are hampers and what? What? <laughs> they are hampers and they are hampers. The hampers is the superior of the hampers. They are hampers that even when you want to, even if your wife wants to open it, she will say, Honey, can I open? Because you want us to do it together. Because this, this hampo is hampering. <laughs> and when God wanted to give you a gift, this is what God did. Human beings are giving you all those hampers. God said, let me give you a hamper. And he thought of the biggest thing to give you. And he gave you himself. Many of you don't realize this. That when Christ was born, the angels were singing. Hope you remember the scripture in Luke. Bible says the angels were shouting. Why are the angels shouting? Because even the angels had never seen God before. 
they were worshiping someone they had not seen for the first time they saw god in human form they said glory in the highest praise be unto god they were shocked and, and god wanted it to let you know i love you I, I don't know why you're laughing, but I'm sure something's happening behind me. But listen to this. When you know someone loves you, you're more confident. When you know someone loves you, you know there's someone there to support you. And that's what God wants you to know. That he loves you. So he can be more confident. So he can support you. Read another scripture. And we'll lay another, another point on this. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. Oh, glory to God. John chapter 18, verse 37. That's the power of a gift. So, why did Jesus Christ call himself? Why was he born? John chapter 18, verse 37. John 18, verse 37. And Pilate therefore said unto Jesus, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Sayest thou that I am the king? To this end was I born. For this purpose came I into this world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, hear my voice. Jesus Christ said, Hey, before I came, there were many opinions of God. He said, The reason why I came is to tell them the truth. He didn't say just tell them the truth. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. You know what I'm saying, So, One of the reasons why Jesus Christ came was to eradicate the misconception people have of God. As a pastor, I noticed something. A lot of people relate to God in different ways. But most people relate to God from the perspective of their father. And most people that struggle with their father always struggle with their relationship with God. I've noticed that if you have, very, if you have a very strict father, you will think that God is like a headmaster. The one that is looking for your mistakes and saying, did you get it right? You did wrong, I will deal with you. Look at that, I will deal with you. Look at that. And, and, that's, and that's because of your human experience. If you have a very indulgent father, you look at God as a very indulgent father. But the question is, sometimes you go to a religious, exp you go to a religious um, experience that also shapes your mind about God. Jesus Christ said, you know, and, and that's why you, when <laughs> Jesus told Philip, Philip said, show us the father and we'll be okay. And Jesus Christ said, Philip, you've been with me all the while. And you're asking me to show you the father. Don't you realize that once you've seen me, you've seen the father? Philip said, what do you mean? He said, everything I do is the father doing it. My God. He says, Jesus was saying that I'm a perfect expression of what the father is and does. What is God like? Hey, what is God like? Look at Jesus. Jesus said, when they slapped on the right cheek, turned the left. That shows God. He's merciful. He doesn't revenge. One time, the apostles were, were walking through a place and they refused them. And they say, let's calm down fire. And Jesus looked at them. He didn't tell them, you can't call down fire. He only told them that you don't know the kind of spirit you have. He said, because God is the one that has power on that control. And does not abuse power because he has it. Jesus uses his teaching to tell us what the father is. Jesus used his life to demonstrate who the father is. Someone says, I have financial problems. How do I know God will provide for me? The way I know is this. When Jesus Christ got to a wedding and the wine finished, all they had to do was to tell him. He made sure they had wine. As your capital finishing business, how do I know that Jesus will turn it around? Because he will take that wine and multiply it. How do I know that? Because Jesus is the expression of the Father. The reason I'm saying this, this the concept of God will, you have will what will determine your relationship with God. They some of you see God as an ATM machine. Every time, give me, 
give me, give me. Because, because in your mind, God is always just, just the person. That, and he has no problem doing that. But God is a father. That's why sometimes, sometimes, you know, we must be careful because sometimes we have all these traditional names. Heze, Menzo, Chioma, Oyigi, Yigi, Alabada, you know, and we call it, and those names sound heavy. You know, they, you know, Allah will tell the oru, you see, you know, Heze, Menzo, you know, all those names sound heavy. And you have the tendency to be like, hey, these are the heavy names of God. But that's not true. John 1, 16 said, nobody has known him like me the person that knew god the most was jesus christ what was the name he gave him father the biggest name of the father is father so how can you say that because all of us don't know him as much as jesus christ and just guys not call him allah will tell you all he called him father that means jesus looked for the perfect name that expresses his nature and person and that name is Father. Those names are wonderful. But the biggest name of God is Father. When you know him as Father, he will not be an eating machine. You know, you know when, I, when I was young, I didn't have to bother about school fees because my parents could provide for me. When you begin to bother, who will marry me? Who will I get a job? Will I get the approval? You don't know him as father yet. You don't know him as father yet. That's, that's why you're worried. See, have you seen a primary school student that is worried about paying school fees? No! Because, he, because even though, you know, many of you, when you grew older, that's when you understood your parents have challenges financially. Yes or no? You know when you were young, you couldn't, you couldn't understand. Because, and they never discussed it. Most of the mature parents, the immature parents discussed this. Most of the mature parents could not discuss it with you because they knew that there was nothing you could do. My God. So, if you see a child that's seven years old, what's the problem, Johnny? Hmm. I'm in primary three, or it's my school fees. You will know that this child has a bad problem. Then the parents also have done a bad job. Yes or no? The question is, God is saying, if I'm your father, why are you so worried? Many of you have not entered 2023. You're already depressed. Why are you so worried? God says, if I'm your father, why can't you relax about your marriage? Her marriage are popping everywhere. Pa, 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 pa. You say, oh God, my, oh God. And God says, I'm your father. I planned this thing out for you. I planned. See, human fathers will stop based on their limitation. So some people, their father will send them to primary school, secondary school, and that's where they will stop. But some fathers that reach out will go to what? University. Yes or no? And some that university will say, don't stop there. Go for master's. And he say, you didn't lack of backward. He said, no, no, no. Go for master's abroad because they have capacity. So every father stops where his capacity stops. Talk to your father that has unlimited capacity. Your father has what? Unlimited capacity. You know what he's saying? How far do you want to go? Let me sponsor you. Glory to God. That's what the father says. How far do you want to go? Let me sponsor you. How far do you want to go? How far do you want your business to go? But what you have to do is to receive the love of the father. How do you receive the love of the father? Father, I know you love me. You know, my kids are not even thinking about what they will eat this afternoon. Because they know it's Christmas Day and they know something special will happen. Yeah. See, once you understand the fatherhood of God, there are things they won't pray about. Because you know that your God is good and kind. This one, you stay up. Who will marry me? Where will I get a job? Or will I provide funding? Imagine they invited Jesus Christ. If I, one time they came to him for a crusade and they were hungry. They didn't tell they were hungry. He just perceived they were hungry. He said, Philip, let's feed them. Jesus was showing us who the Father is. This, this kind of God that they say, Takuti Jesu, Takuti. He said, that's not the Jesus you serve. You don't have to Takuti. Before, that's why he says this. He says, all those things the Gentiles seek for. Is here, man. The problem is that can you just trust him? The year is coming to an end. 
and some things have not happened. I said, God, what are you looking at? Time is going. And God says, time? Yeah, the one that is bound by time, I made time. If you think time has gone, I can reverse it for you. I, I can reverse time for you. But when he came to Lazarus' tomb, Mary and Martha said, Lord, you came too late. He said, you don't understand, I come on time. <laughs> that the time I show up, everything will arrange themselves together and it will be the perfect time. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Once it shows up, that timing is beautiful. Brother, relax. Sister, relax. You see, I've been waiting for the funding for one year. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. What I wanted to do today is to rest in his love. When you rest in love, will you be depressed? Never. How can I be depressed when my father has sponsored me? Hey, my God. Have you seen that has scholarship before? You hear, oh, I have, I'm sponsored. Sponsored means when I get there, I don't have to worry about anything. Everything has been sorted before I got there. Everything I want has been sorted before I got there. That's what God wants to know. I'm your father. You don't have to, hey, my God. You don't have to, oh, oh, my God. It has been sorted. Do you know kids even know the way to their school? They don't have to know the way. Daddy knows the way. Mommy knows the way. That's all that matters. Why are you bothered about when will it happen? This and this. Just follow. This is kind of teaching that makes you fall in love with God and say, God, I'm tired of struggling and trying to make things happen. I will rest in your love. When many of you, the way human beings have broken your heart, does it not tell you that only God can love you the way you want? The way you're looking for affirmation and support from people and people have broken that down. Does it not say that only God can do that for you? Look at Jesus. Jesus is live. Shows us who God is. Come Chima. Jesus saw this shaky guy that was a nobody. And he says, he says, he says, your name will no longer be called Peter. He said, your name can be called Cephas. <laughs> Peter's brother said, <laughs> this guy is a useless guy. But God doesn't see us the way we are. He calls potential out of us. He calls potential. This is, this is, someone says, how, how does God see me? Look at how God saw people. He looked at them, they say, uh, this small, this small businessman, God never says that. God looks at Peter and said, he would have said, this small businessman. He didn't say that. He said, wow, this multi, this international business mogul. It cause potential out of you. So why did Jesus Christ come? He came to clear all your confusion of who God is. Someone says, maybe it's God's way for me not to marry. That's why he attended the marriage. What's that thing they do now? They do something. They, there's, a, there's something they do like when you say something that is points, they tap. Is that, is that what it, I don't know. It, like, so it says point, 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 point. What? Wisdom. 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 Yes, yeah, wisdom, 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 wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom. Praise God. If Jesus doesn't want to marry, why did he attend the marriage? As a matter of fact, the Bible says he was poor, so he can be rich. He was single, so he can be married. All of you that do businesses, why was Jesus Christ interested? Hope you know Peter never told him I caught nothing. All the time Peter was struggling. Peter just was looking at him. He was looking at him. He said, let me help this guy. He went to meet Peter. Peter thought he needed something. That's why every time God asks you to give, you'll be quite unwise to think God wants something. No, sir. Your giving become the instrument to show that you have faith in the power of God. And that's why we give. So, he went to meet Peter. Peter had been struggling. He had known Peter was struggling. He said, Peter, um, Peter okay, lend me your boat. And, and the reason why that was faith was that when you've caught nothing and you now give your time and energy, it's very frustrating. Just imagine that. Just imagine that. 
you do Uber. One whole day, you've not got one ride. As you're going, someone say, please give me a ride. You say, are you okay? That was the story of Peter. But the reason why Jesus Christ asked him for that was this. If in your depravity, you can give me a ride, you can show faith, I can bless you. And Peter said, okay, use the boat. And when he finished, Peter never told him I had the business problem. But Jesus wanted to show, I don't know if your business will listen to this, because all of you business people, you're so smart, you really think that God doesn't do with business. Jesus Christ observed that he had not caught a fish. And he said, Peter, cast your net. He gave, he said, cast your net in for a draft. And he said, and Peter said, oh, no, 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 no. And Peter struggled. And he said, okay, nevertheless, I'll do it for you. Then Peter caught fishes. Why did Jesus Christ do that? Jesus Christ did it for one reason. So that when you have business challenges, you can know that he's interested in it. When you've gone through losses in your business, you can know that Jesus is interested. Because Jesus reveals the nature of the Father. Jesus reveals what? The nature of the Father. Glory to God. The love of God is so strong that the human mind cannot comprehend it. That's why Paul always kept on praying that he may know the length, the breadth, the height, the depth of the love of God. It's, un, it's unimaginable that someone can love us like this. When I was a younger pastor, I used to do a lot to impress God. It took a long time for God to tell me, I'm impressed with you already. He said, before I called you, I knew your potentials. He said, before I called you, I knew how much you love. Because a lot of you are under pressure. You're under pressure. Under pressure. Don't be under pressure. Rest in grace. Rest in grace. What's going on with the business? God loves me, so I know it's sorted out. What's going on with that prover? God loves me, I know it's sorted out. What's going on with your marriage? It seems to be a lot of problems. God loves me, I know it's sorted out. How? Because, because there's no problem that you have that God did not know will be there. You are the one that is surprised. God is not surprised. And God that knew it to be there also made a solution for you. So why did Jesus Christ come? To erase all our misconception about God. God is not like your headmaster father. That's not God. God is not like your nasty boyfriend. That's not God. God is not like your nagging mom. That's not God. God is not what they taught you in the religious church. That's not God. Look at Jesus, the perfect image of God. They were hungry one day and they asked him, let's give them food to eat. He cares about what I eat. How can you imagine? He cares about what I eat. He gave them bread and fish, balanced diets, carbohydrates and protein. He doesn't want you to drink curry in the morning and drink curry at night. He wants you to be balanced. Glory to God. Can we pray? Oh my God. Let's go ahead and pray. Will you stand on your feet? Will you sing that song? Let's sing it together. Oh yeah. Choir, come up quickly. Go ahead and pray. There's a prayer. Lord, reveal your love to me. Reveal your love to me.
Will you believe this today? Sing it with me. Yes, Lord, boy, you want it now. Yes. see him. He loved this and he did this for me. This is my prayer for you today. That the knowledge of Christ will fill your heart. The love of Christ will fill your heart. That you will know it in a deep way. In Jesus name. And please remember this. The time we need to remember God loves you the most is in the most difficult time. That's the most difficult time because that's when you don't feel it. You know, when we're just praying out, the Spirit of God said to me, remember, I don't sponsor flops. He said, no matter how it's bad, he said, I see the end from the beginning and I've seen a bright future. He does not sponsor flops. You know, if, you know you're not a failure. Even when you can feel it, remember his love, his hot liquid love that is chasing you. In your darkest hour, learn to say, Lord, I know that you love me. Stop saying things like I'm depressed. Say, Lord, I know that you love me. Even if I, cannot, I can't feel it, I don't understand it, I know that you love me. Praise God. Somebody shout hallelujah.